my love for the writings of Nietzsche is different to my love for most of the other authors that I that I've ever come across or any other figures that I look up to because it's not about agreeing with him it's not about seeing what he says and being like oh yes I love this it's it's about the power he has to evoke thought and in this video I'd like to explore how that has very little to do with Nietzsche's intelligence it has a lot to do with Dionysus just before we jump in, if you're enjoying these videos, it'd be really great if you could hit the like button below, and if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel. All this really helps things to keep growing, so yeah, without further delay, let's let's jump right in. Nietzsche is often held to be one of the, the smartest people of all time, or one of the, the greatest minds of all philosophy, and it's it's this, the, the way we put that focus on him, the way we put that admiration on him, is to look at him as someone that's very intelligent, someone that's very, very smart, must have a very high IQ, but I think that that notion is such bullshit. Now, it's not that I don't think that Nietzsche was highly intelligent, but that's not why his writings are so good. His writings are so good because of Dionysus, it's because he was possessed by a god. And Nietzsche kind of talks about this uh, in Beyond Good and Evil, he mentions that uh, all the drives have at some point or other done philosophy. And I guess a good example of that is, is, is someone who's on a diet and they get to a point that they're, they're so hungry that the, you, you see that there are now two selves. There's the one that wants the instant gratification, I'm going to eat, and there's the other one that's like, no, no, we should, you know, I've got this, I want to do this nice diet or whatever. And there's just two different streams of thoughts going on there and you could call those two different drives. You could call one of them a higher, maybe more super ego kind of driver this is what I want to do whereas the other is more of like an, an id kind of drive it's coming from below it's coming from the belly it's coming from I want this now and that's just a simple idea of two sub personalities but there are so many different sub personalities and in Jungian thought and with Nietzsche the the idea of the gods is, is something that speaks through us it's, it's that it's one of those chains of thoughts that grab you and that you think in a certain way and you can have this with uh, this is why people can often seem like hypocrites you know like at one moment they're acting out of this self and at another moment they're acting out of that self and this idea of the multiple personalities is just rife you know you, you can't really get away from it and so the path of wisdom for for me is, is the integration of all these selves into a, a, an effective commune into an effective congress where no one is just you know leading a rebellion against the others it's everyone everyone is well fed at the table so that no one goes too far out of line to disrupt the entire order so it's about keeping the boat steady and but some people get possessed by gods and if you look at someone like Elon Musk he works 120 hours or he went through phases where he worked 120 hours a week and that's a man who's possessed that's a man who you don't get that much energy you no one has the allotment of energy let's say you took two people and you said okay you're both going to work 120 hours well what what do you think is going to happen there they're both going to crumble no one can do that without the right motivation without the the right neurochemistry it's not about willpower it's about something else it's a different type of power it's a dynamic power that's coming from some spirit moving through you and in one really interesting note Jung talked about how in the in between World War One and World War Two, he was noticing the emergence of the of the German the, the blonde beast in the German psyche and this he equated with the the ancient Germanic god Wotan and so he could see this this energy and even if you look at how that energy plays out on a, on a societal level scale one once Germany got leveled at the end of World War II, they were defeated, it was, it was tough, the, there was an economic miracle and that is that, that dynamism, it's like it got redirected from the idea of war and that Wotan energy went into something else and it became creative. You could say a similar thing for Japan, and that creative energy out of the destruction, it's unusual and economists have described it as the, the German economic miracle and economists aren't generally ones to use the word miracle but it was such a surprising thing. And I believe that's because that, that Wotan archetype was constellated in the German psyche and so this is, the, this is the, the perspective I have on gods which informs what I'm about to say with Dionysus. So I think that Nietzsche was possessed by this idea of Dionysus and he was obsessed with the idea of the affirmation of life, of loving the, the sensual way of, of life and embracing life for what it is and not looking to another world. And that fits with Dionysus's Bacchic revelries, you know, his his love of the intoxication, the orgies, the, the pure sensuality, the almost release of these primal instincts in a, in a release valve and in the Eleusinian mysteries and experience of the underworld, not just a, a conceptual thought about it, but an actual experience. And so Dionysus is about connecting to that living experience and 
moving into the, the passionate frenzy of just loving life and getting lost in the emotions. And this is the God that Nietzsche was so much about. We even see it in his first book, The Birth of Tragedy Out of the Spirit of Music. His insight with philology was that there's, there's two strains for understanding the, the ancient Greek psyche. There's the Apollonian, which is the, the ordered the measured, the objective, versus the Dionysian, which is the, the purely subjective, the last, the ecstatic. And Nietzsche realized that this Dionysian thing, and then it's almost like the rest of his career was isolating and embodying it. And I think at some point he just got possessed by it. He got carried away on the, the waves of that energy. And he's got a lot of quotes that are purely about that love of life, the embracing of life in both the negative and positive aspects and riding that wave. He says, uh, what if I told you that in order to have happiness unto the heavens, you would have to be prepared for depression unto death. And that's the gambit he's willing to make, is that he's willing to take the, the extreme lows in order to have the extreme highs. And whenever he did go mad finally in a, in a square in Turin in 1889, he broke down hugging a horse. And in the few days afterwards, he wrote a, a flurry of letters to a few different people. And the letters were signed either as Dionysus or as the Crucified. And that's a clue in itself, the idea that he's signing these letters as Dionysus. He's so identified with that. He's so lost in that. And I believe that was just his mind finally breaking down into this Dionysian possession. And you see the, the ego inflation throughout his writings, especially if you read Ecce Homo, which is the, the last book he wrote, just a couple of months before he, he went mad. It's it's got great titles like Why I Am So Clever, Why I Am Great. And yeah, it's it's just it's amazing. There's so much arrogance there, but it's like the the ego inflation of a man who's possessed by a god. And that's what's so fascinating to to, to read in Nietzsche because it's it's different. The Dionysian energy isn't something we see in this pure of a form as we see it with Nietzsche anywhere else. And it's if you're reading any spiritual people, any wise people from the, the Stoics to the Taoists, it's all Apollonian. It's all uh, get control over the emotions, uh, become sober, become objective, step outside, become the observer self looking at this comedy that's happening of crazy emotions and erratic reactions. And they're telling you to become sober, to become objective, to develop a higher point of view and to step back from the, the madness of the emotions. That's the Apollonian path. But the Dionysian path, and this is what's so fascinating about Nietzsche, is that the Dionysian path is what he chose. He went that way. He decided to get lost in it. And that's the embracing of the emotions. It's the embracing of that lower life. Because he saw that Apollonian thing as the, the negation of life, the moving away, the saying no to this world and to this life. Whereas the Dionysian is saying yes to it. He's getting deep down into those instincts. And some of the things, even I'm working on a video of, of his relationship with Lucy Loam and what he's talking about in terms of his misogyny, because he's got some really misogynistic passages in Beyond Good and Evil. And there's, there's an interesting philosophy going on underneath it, though. There's an interesting psychology of what's happening with Nietzsche at that point. And he's just someone that decided to give himself over to the emotions, to give himself over to this internal world, and he just got lost in it. And the fact that he ended up going insane might not be any, any kind of an accident. If you look at the trajectory of his thinking, it seems like a natural end point, that it was almost inevitable that he would go that way. And the reason why I love Nietzsche isn't because I want to follow that path. I don't want to become him. I have started reading Zarathustra a few times and had to put it down because I feel like, whoa, this is taking me in a direction that I don't necessarily want to go. Now, there's definitely parts of it I want to take. There's parts of it that are, yes, you want to affirm life. And so I love it. And it's, it's so beautiful and so, it's cause it's so new. It's so different to what everyone else is talking about. And that fresh perspective is really what Nietzsche has in, in spades and which I think is what makes him so popular with, with so many people and why his, his influence has been so strong is because it's a completely different perspective. And as I covered in the video of Dionysus as, as a late god, he is this new god. He's the, the last born god. And it's, it's about the, it's a high civilization being disconnected from its instincts, turning downwards, turning into the instincts in order to affirm them. And this is exactly what we see happen with Nietzsche, is that he's someone who is, I don't think he ever had sex in his life. He's someone who is such a, he's like the prototypical incel. He's, he's got all this passion. He was obsessed with Lou Salome. He fell madly in love with her. But on the other hand, he never had that, that consummation of any kind of like sexual experience, any kind of the, the animalistic thing. He was so timid around women. And he's very much like that end product of a decadent civilization. Everything that he's talking about, 
it's it's almost autobiographical in a way we see the things that he's struggling with and so for him to affirm the Dionysian is to that turn downwards is to the turn to realizing he's he's a head cut off from his instincts and wanting to connect with them and his work is is the attempt to connect with them and it's beautiful to watch that and to learn from it but uh where i feel like it, it all went a bit wrong is that he went he got too into the Dionysian he got too identified with it he got lost in it he got possessed by the god but in return, we've gotten the, the teachings of a god. Because when I read Nietzsche, it's, it's, I'm not reading a man. I'm not reading a really smart guy. I'm reading a god. I'm reading Dionysus's writings, Dionysus's confession. And that's what's so amazing about Nietzsche. That's just what I wanted to share with you today. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please subscribe. If you haven't already, give us a thumbs up down below. And uh, yeah, otherwise, I shall see you next time. Thank you for watching.